We're gonna start with a good hand stomping, clapping. Faithful promises Time and time again You have proven You do just what you say Though the storms may go And the winds may blow I will stay steadfast And let my heart learn When you speak a word It will come to pass Great is your faithfulness to me great is your faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting same i will praise your name great is your faithfulness to yeah, God from age to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Yeah, history can prove there's nothing you can't do, you're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain safe.
From the rising sun to the setting same, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. to the ground my hope and firm foundation he'll never let me down I put my faith in Jesus my anchor to the ground my hope and firm foundation he'll never let me
Glory to God. Glory to God. He never fails. He never fails. Stay standing. We're going to pray. He's never lost a battle. Sometimes we think he did because it's not the way we want it. But he is undefeatable. Perfect score every time. And we are more than conquerors with him. Amen? Stick with him and his plan and you'll always win. Amen? Father, we're grateful to you that you are omnipotent. You are all-powerful God. And you will never be defeated. You never lose a battle. And Lord, when we stand in battle with you, you go before us, you come behind us, and you fight our battles for us, and you always win the victory. Lord, help us to see through our spiritual eyes that we would walk by faith and not by sight. Because when we walk by faith and we see through the eyes of faith, we see that you win, you win, you win. And at the end of the book, you conquer and you defeat the enemy once and for all. The enemy has no power compared to you. And so, Lord, help us not to give him any more power than he has, but to give you all the praise for what you are able to accomplish. You take care of us. You heal our bodies. You do things doctors can't do. You do things nurses can't do. You do things medication can't do. You do things bank accounts can't do. You do things paychecks can't do. You supply all of our needs for your children. And we are grateful. And Lord, help us to remember to praise you, but hang on tightly to you because you are going to, Make us more than conquerors. We will be overcomers. Let him who has ears to hear, hear what the Spirit of God is saying tonight, and you will be overcomers with Christ. We pray, God, that your blessing would be upon this service tonight. Touch Renee, anoint her. Lord, may her words be your words tonight. You know what we need to hear. And so, Holy Spirit, Use the word that she has prepared to ride on the wings of the spirit right into our spirits tonight and accomplish what it is you want to accomplish. Lord, may we not resist your hand moving in our lives. May we not resist the nudging of the Holy Spirit that wants to do great things in us, that wants to transform us into the image of Christ to make us more like you. Lord, may we not resist what you want to do because you want all things to go well. You do all good things. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. And how can we go wrong when we are transformed into your likeness? We can't go wrong. And so, Lord, we give ourselves to you the rest of this service. Open our hearts and spirits to you, Lord. Bless those that couldn't be here tonight. I pray that you would touch their bodies and touch them and strengthen them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Everybody turn around and say hallelujah. Hello. Can you bring my, my, my phone, Darren? I left it over there. Praise the Lord. I have a week off. Another. I know. I'm slacking, aren't I? Thank you. Praise the Lord. We had a great week up at National Fine Arts, Assemblies of God. It was a great gathering. Uh, saw a lot of friends and ministers, and it's good to see that people have been faithful in the ministry for many, many, many years. Uh, and missionary friends that have been coming up on 35, 40 years of ministry, and uh, you know, faithfulness to the Lord and his calling is such a beautiful thing to see, and it was so great to see um, kids not only excited about winning competitions, but also winning for the Lord and giving their gifts and talents to the Lord and realizing that there's something extra special about giving their talents to the Lord, that the Lord does with them what no man can do. And so they're learning that at their young age. We all had to learn that at some point, that... Um, it's not in our own strength, but it's in the power of God. Amen? Did, have you learned that yet? 
it's about time. It's about time you pass that test, okay, everybody? That it's the Lord. It's the Lord that does great things through us. I um, want to read to you a little note from our friend Stefan. Um, he, he sang for us last week, and after he was finished singing, he came and gave me some good news for him and his ministry, and um, I asked him to just send a little, uh, a little text to us so that I can explain better what the Lord is doing. You know, when we came and we were um, voted in as the pastor of Salt Church, he was very involved there, very involved with youth and children's ministry, Royal Rangers. God, it takes a special man to be involved in Royal Rangers. I'm a glamper, not a camper, right? But um, that's, that's his heart and his passion. And he says to us, I'm grateful to Worship in the Word Fellowship family for accepting me la this last year. You have blessed my life. This spring, I found myself in position to take the next step in my ministry calling. I wasn't sure where or when, but I knew I couldn't miss the wave that was coming. At the same time, a pastor friend of mine had planted a church and happened to be looking for someone to help lead children's ministry. One of the services I attended showed me the confirmation that this was my next assignment. So after praying for the right time frame and occasion, I've accepted the position as children's minister at Wellspring Church AG in Palm Springs. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is a visionary position for now, but its potential is unlimited. I won't forget my time with you and will continue to accept your prayers as in the past. Amen. Amen. And we will continue to pray for him and that the Lord would bless him. He's a great guy. He loves the Lord and he loves the ministry of the church. And I told him he better come visit. I think their service is like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so he'd have to kind of hoof it, but too bad. Hoof it. Hoof it once in a while, come see us. And they take, I guess they take a sabbatical during the month of July, so we may see him then. But um, I'll make sure that he doesn't say stay scarce, okay? And praise the Lord. Would you commit to praying for him um, and that the Lord would fulfill the calling that is on his life? Amen? Amen. So, without further ado... Peter was asking if we were going to have hellfire and brimstone tonight, but I, you know, it's in her DNA. I don't know how she can stop it. She comes from a long line of hell. No, not just hell. <laughs> fire and brimstone. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, honey. Well, I had invited a whole slew of people today. I invited them, so I'm a little disappointed they ain't here, but I did have a few of them say, I'm going to watch online. I couldn't make it. So I, they're watching online, and I'm glad about that. And those of you who are watching tonight, I'm thankful that you are there. But for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have life eternal, right? And God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We all know those two verses, do we not? They are very familiar to us. Matthew 9, 38 says, Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers to reap because the fields are over ripened and they are ready for harvest. They're more than ready for harvest. We are harvesters. All of us who are believers, all of us in this room are harvesters. We have been given a job to do, but we are so preoccupied with our own struggles, with our own aches and pains, that we forget what our real job is. Let's look at a few people who have been preoccupied with their struggles, but turned them around to be harvesters. Many of us have heard of Dave Reaver. Have you heard of Dave? Who served in the Vietnam War and he was burned beyond recognition. He was hospitalized for 14 months. His survival and life are miraculous and he uses his war experiences of loneliness, peer pressure, disfigurement, and pain to speak into others' lives. And he does it with humor. How many have seen him take off his ear? and play the piano, and he says, I play by ear. <laughs> you know, I mean, he just does. David Ring, 
He says, I have muscular dystrophy. What's your problem? Pastor David mentioned Paul the last week, a couple of weeks ago in his, his last Acts series uh, when he said that Paul had been given a thorn in the flesh. Paul asked God to remove it three times. Now, he may have asked more times. I don't know, but we have it recorded three times. And what did God say? No. We don't like it when God says no. You know, when I'm praying, I want to hear a yes, I, at least a maybe, you know. I, and I think, though, that I'd rather hear a no than maybe in a little while. Even though Paul got a no, that did not stop him. He didn't say, because you're not taking this thorn out of my flesh, I'm going to quit preaching, or I'm going to quit teaching, or I'm going to quit the ministry. No, Paul said, I have been knocked down, but I have not been knocked out. Have you ever been knocked down? I know I have quite a few times, but I refuse to be knocked out. I refuse to let the enemy cancel me out of this race. And I'm not sure if you've ever heard this story. My daddy told it years ago, and I've, I've always remembered it, uh, about the little boy who was noticing the struggle of a caterpillar inside of a cocoon. And his dad told him there's a butterfly in there just waiting to get out. So the little boy, thinking he was doing the caterpillar a favor, he got his pocket knife out and he slit the cocoon open and out flopped the larvae. It wasn't a butterfly yet because it had not finished its struggle. When God allows struggles to come into our lives, there's a reason for it. Don't waste your struggle. Don't waste your trial. Don't waste the test that God is allowing to come into your life. Inside of this cocoon, allowing the larvae and the caterpillar to struggle and fight, during the struggle, it develops the necessary muscle so that when it does come out of the cocoon, it has the ability to fly. If you help it, you ruin it. You may think you're helping someone in their struggle. You may think you're helping someone in their test, but if God shuts us up to himself and he is permitting a struggle or he is permitting testing or trials to come into your life, he means that he's got confidence in you. And when we think of this or when I think of this, my mind always goes to Job. More than any human being, he was tested and tried. Listen, when we read the book of Job, we find out that we really don't have any problems. <laughs> you know, the whole test of Job was brought about by God. The Bible tells us that when the angels were coming before God and Satan came with them, and God said to him, two lives, and God said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job. That's my boy. He's my child. And Satan said, well, yes, I have considered him. Job doesn't serve you for nothing. Job serves you because you've blessed him. He's the richest man in the East. He has a lovely family. He's a very successful farmer and harvester. He doesn't serve you for nothing. But <laughs> if you let me touch him, he will curse you and ask to die. So God said, go ahead. Yet I'll trust him. I shall then come forth as gold because I know that he's still living because I feel him in my soul. How many know that no matter what your struggle, you can still feel him in your soul? Let's go one step beyond that. When Job got to the point where he couldn't even feel God, 
And he could not see God. And he could not hear God. And he could not smell God. And he could not taste God. All five senses had failed him. And he didn't know where God was. Here was Job's confession in the midst of it all. I know that my Redeemer lives. It may not be clear or as plain as you'd like it to be, but Job knew this very thing. He said, I know that when I don't see my Redeemer, he is alive. I know that when I don't hear my Redeemer, he is alive. When I know that I don't taste, feel, smell my Redeemer, he is alive. Can I get an amen in here tonight? Through your trial, through your struggle, through your distress, God is holding on to you. God is on my side. How many of you believe and know that tonight? God is on your side. Though God slay me, yet I will trust him. I shall then come forth as gold. I know that he's still living because I feel him in my soul. We need to serve notice on the devil, Peter. You asked me if we were going to serve notice? We're serving notice. You know, I like to sing songs to the devil. When I start feeling oppressed or depressed coming on, thoughts I know are coming from the enemy, I'll serve notice right on, right then and there. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Light the candle, everything's all right. Do y'all remember that song? Or, it is well with my soul. Sing it. It is well, it is well with my soul. Go ahead, devil. Slay me. I'll die trusting in God. But you know what? He can't slay me. Because God is on my side. And the Bible says if God is on our side, who can be against me? Right. Romans 8, 29 says, For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Now, he didn't say there would be many Christs, because there's only one Christ, Right? But he said there would be many brothers and sisters. Jesus overcame to teach us that you can overcome. Jesus went through trials to teach us that we can go through trials. Jesus went through death to show us that we can go through death. He went through the grave to show us that we are going to go through the grave. Now, I'm not signing up to die today. But I know this. If I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because he is with me. His rod and his staff, they what? Comfort me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil and my cup is running over. Somebody say my cup is running over. Paul said, I was separated from my mother's womb that God's son might be revealed in me. I was born separated at birth for this purpose, that the son of God might be revealed in me. That is my purpose. That is your purpose. The reason that you were born is not to sit in that chair and twiddle your thumbs. The reason you were born was not to become a member of the core group here at Worship and the Word Fellowship. The reason you were born was not to sing a few worship songs, give a little money, and then retreat back to the safety of your four walls. That is not the reason God saved your soul. God saved your soul so that you could be a replica God says, just that I read, those that I foreknew, I predestined to be conformed to the image of my son. 
You cannot conform to the image of Jesus Christ without going through some struggle. It's easy to come into this room and park yourself in a chair. It's easy just to come in and relax. Come in and say, I've had a tough week. Haven't had a tough day. I've had a tough life. What I need is a break from it all. Church is not the place to relax and take a nap. What does the Bible say? He said, enter into his gates with what? And into his courts with what? Praise. He said, be thankful unto him and what? Bless his name. So when I read about not only the biblical characters, but Dave Reaver, David Ring, modern day people who are struggling just like the Apostle Paul, just like Joseph. Let's think about Joseph for a second. He was betrayed by his own brothers. Now, I've been betrayed. Some of you have been stabbed in the back by a friend. But he was betrayed by his own brothers. They threw him in a pit and then decided, well, let's pull him out, sell him into slavery. These are, these are his brothers. And when you read about it, when it says they threw him in the pit, it says the Lord was with Joseph. When they pulled him up out of the pit and sold him into slavery, the Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph. Then he got into Potiphar's house, and we know all what happened there. Potiphar's wife, oh, she was after him. Then she lies about him, caused him to be thrown into prison. And the Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph. Then Joseph makes a couple friends in prison. And they said, you know what? He says, remember me when you get out. And they said, oh, we sure will. And they get out and they forget about him for a couple of years. And the Bible says, the Lord was with Joseph. What am I trying to get you to see? Do you think Joseph was in a struggle? You see, Joseph didn't have this book to read about himself. This book wasn't written until later. He couldn't turn over into Genesis and read about himself and say, oh, you know what? It's going to come out all right, Joseph. He didn't know it was going to be all right. But the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph when? When he was thrown into the pit. And the Lord was with Joseph when? When he was sold into slavery. And the Lord was with Joseph when? When he was lied about by Potiphar's wife. And the Lord was with Joseph when? When he was put in prison. When he was forgotten about in prison. He was still not aware that the Lord was with him. But on one occasion, when he was asked to interpret a dream, Joseph went from a pauper, from a prisoner, to a prime minister. Somebody says, well, that happened all of a sudden. No, it did not. It didn't. It was a process. It was a struggle. It was a battle. It was a trial. It was a test. And just like Job said, though God slay me, yet I will trust him. Joseph said, I will not deny my relationship with God. I will not deny my fellowship with my heavenly father. And because of that, God brought him through the test. You think God will bring you through your test? I know he will. You think God will bring you through your struggle? I know he will. Some of you are saying, well, you know, Listen, he won't bring you through until he's through with you. And some of you are saying tonight, you know, I really wish he'd get through with me. I recently had a friend of mine, because she didn't understand the struggle and trials she's going through right now, she said to me, Renee, I'm mad at God. Listen, I've been through a lot of stuff in my life, but I've never been mad at God. And I had, I had a conversation with my dad about this when we were up in Georgia, and we talked about it, and he was saying, I've never been mad at God. Listen, why? Because I trust God. I know that he loves me. I started off by saying it. The Bible tells me that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Not only does he love me, but it says he loves the world. Did you know that God loved you when you were a devil? The Bible says he loved us before we knew him. 
He loved us when we were acting like the devil. He loved Mary Magdalene before he cast those devils at her. He loved her when she was bound. He loved her when she was distressed by the devil. He loved her so much that he loved the devil right out of her. God will love the devil right out of you. Can I get a hallelujah? God will love the distress out of you. God will love the torment out of you. God will love the sickness out of you. God will love the disease out of you. God will love you when nobody else loves you. When you feel like nobody loves you, God loves you. You say, well, I don't even feel God's love. That is why we are taught in the word of God not to go by feelings. If you go by feelings, you are not going to last very long as a Christian. Let's be honest for a second. We don't always feel saved. I don't. There are some mornings I get up and my saved feeler is broke. I just don't feel saved. I try to feel saved. I get my word out. I read the scriptures. I worship the Lord. I pray. I sing. But 1 John 4, 20 says, how can you love me that you have not seen when you cannot even love your neighbor that you see every day? Have you ever heard someone say, well, so-and-so, they just rub me the wrong way. That's right. And that's why God put them in your life, to rub you the wrong way. Like sandpaper. Sandpaper is to rub off the rough spot. And God puts people in our lives to rub off the rough spots. Listen, there are people I don't like. Now, there's nobody I don't love, all right? And God loves everybody, but I'm not sure he likes everybody. Say, so how can you say that, Renee? Because I know what God likes. Tells me right here. He doesn't like hatred. He doesn't like malice. He doesn't like jealousy. Ooh, that's a tough one for me. He doesn't like envy. He doesn't like strife. But he loves you. And the things that he don't like are, are totally opposite of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience. And I have a tough time with the jealousy one. I know that shocks some of y'all, but I'm a jealous person. Right? You, that, that's the perfect time for you to say a big old amen. <laughs> and, and, you know, I've always been this way since I was a little girl. I, and my daddy's a pastor, so, you know, a lot of women were around him. My mother's a pastor's wife. A lot of men were around me. If I saw a, a woman with my daddy, I would scream, pitch a fit, tell her to get away from my daddy. I came, I came, uh, home I was one of my last whoopings that I got I think I was 12 or 13 but that we had an evangelist and he was at the house and he had bought a ring for his wife and uh he was showing my mother he wanted to see what it would look like on his wife's hand so he had showed my mother but I walked up right when they were holding hands like this and I went off on this evangelist said get your hands off my mother I've just always had, you know, and, and Lord knows I'm jealous when he's with any woman by himself. I'm like, mm-mm, no, no. I don't care how old they are, how young they are, mm-mm. I want you near another woman by yourself. It's just a thing I got. So jealousy is a tough one for me. I'm just being honest with y'all. The Bible says to love your enemies. You say, well, I can't love my enemy. They are out to do me in. They are out to hurt me and harm me, and I can't love them. And we had this conversation in the pool the other day. Because I'm still, I still, there's some people that I, if they walked in right now, I would walk up and punch them in the face. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest with y'all. There are things that I got to work through. There are struggles I go through. And it's hard for me to love my enemies. But we need to tell Jesus that. And while you're telling him that, picture him on the cross, 
outstretched arms, hands nailed to the cross, his feet nailed to the cross, his side a pierced, his head crowned with thorns, and he's crying out, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was because of my sin and your sin that God turned his back on his only begotten son. It wasn't his son that he turned his back on, but it was my sin. Because God cannot indulge sin. God hates sin, but he loves the sinner. And the world has a hard time with this. But I believe what the Bible says, the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. The Bible says if you love the world, the love of God is not in you. He said it, not me. He said if you love the world, then your allegiance is divided. Now, how many of you would like it if your spouse came to you and said, I only love you part of the time. And that's maybe sort of the truth. <laughs> Do you think that my husband has loved me every, or liked, let's say like, liked me every day for 28 years? 100%. Every time he looks at me, he just wants to bow down and worship the ground I walk on. <laughs> I know that's not true, because I can be a real booger bear, all right? I know it's hard for y'all to believe that I can be this way, but I can't. Now, how many of y'all know that, that you can be nasty? Sometimes our attitude stinks. It's just nasty. I have a friend that said, for the first six months, I loved my wife so much, I could eat her up. The next six months, I wish I had her. Something happened to his feeler. We all know you are on your best behavior when you're dating. You cross every T, you dot every I, because you want to present yourself as something that you're not. <laughs> and now when I say I don't like my husband every day or he doesn't like me every day, what I'm saying is those feelings are not always there. Because he might do something I don't like. I might do something he don't like. And at that moment, my feeler ain't feeling it. But my commitment keeps us together. His commitment keeps us together. You see, we think that marriage and relationships are feelings. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> feelings. That's not what's going to keep your marriage together. It's commitment. Commitment to your spouse when you don't like him or her. And sometimes you have to commit to your kids. Come on now, let's just be honest. You say, well, I've always liked my kids. You lie. You think I've always liked Darren? I love him, but there have been times... There are very few, okay, very few, that I have not liked him. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here for a second because I want you to know you have to learn to deal with struggles. And you struggle because of your feelings. And sometimes we don't feel saved. And we'll struggle with our feelings and we'll say, well, I don't feel saved. You know how I know I'm saved? Because it's a fact of this book. The B-I-B-L-E. This book says, come unto me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It continues, and he says, take my yoke upon you and learn about me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A lot of Christians, they come into the house of the Lord all burdened down. They can't hardly get to the house of the Lord. When they get here, they can't hardly get in their seat. <laughs> then they can't hardly get back to their car because they're so burdened down. God says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There's never been a time 
when I didn't feel saved that I really, I, I knew I was. I may not have felt it, but I still knew that I was saved. Well, the devil told me, well, now wait now. It don't matter what the devil says to you. The Bible says the devil in John 8, was a liar from the beginning. The devil has never told the truth. He doesn't know how to tell the truth because he's a liar. He is a deceiver. And when you are in the middle of a struggle, you don't need to be listening to the devil. You need to be listening to the word of God. You need to be reading the word of God. You need to commit the word of God to your memory. What the psalmist said, I have hid God's word in my heart and it keeps me from sin. You know what keeps you from sin? Not your feelings. This right here, the word of God that is hidden in your heart. What is it about this book that disturbs people? That causes our culture to hate it so much? The only reason I can think of is it contains the letters J-E-S-U-S. And the devil hates the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is his undoing. The Bible says Jesus has come to destroy the works of the devil. So whatever the devil is working on in your life, Jesus came to destroy it. When you go to the dentist or you have a procedure done, you make an appointment, right? You have a time that you are to be seen. If you arrive early, you may have to wait in the waiting room. If you get there late, they may be gone. So until my appointment time, you, the, the, the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. So, and I say this all the time, until my appointment time rolls around, I can't die. I may have sickness in my body, but if it ain't my time, I ain't going to die. You may say, well, what if I pull out a gun and shoot you? Go ahead. If it ain't my appointed time, then the bullet ain't going to hit me or it's not going to harm me. Some of you are afraid because the devil has put fear in your life. He's put fear in your heart. It could be sickness. It could be fear of losing your job or your spouse. But you have to remember that the devil is a liar. The devil is a what? And when the devil starts whispering things to you and talking to you, you need to commit those words to memory. The devil is a liar. You say, well, the devil doesn't talk to me. Well, that's odd because he talked to Jesus. So are you holier than Jesus? The devil told Jesus to turn the stones to bread, but he wouldn't do it. He refused to make bread for the devil. Then the devil took him up to the pinnacle of the temple and said, if you're such a Bible student, Jesus, it is written that the angels will take charge over thee. But Jesus answered with, it is also written... You and I need to know what is also written. So when somebody misuses scripture or abuses the word of God, we can say yes, but it is also written. It is also written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. And in a minute, I'm going to invite any of you who are going through a struggle of any kind to join me up here in this altar area. We're going to make this area up here altar area. I don't know what it is. I don't need to know what it is. It's between you and Jesus. And we're going to pray tonight that you can rejoice through your struggle. That you can have happiness through your struggle. You can have joy and fulfillment through your struggle. For the joy that was set before him, Jesus endured the cross. He endured the test. He despised the shame, but he endured it for the joy what was that joy? Your salvation, my salvation. He looked out and saw that and he said, for the joy, I'll endure the trial. With joy, I'll carry the cross. With joy, I'll take the crown of thorns. For the joy that is set before me, the salvation of all mankind, I'm going to be joyful about it. In the midst of your struggle, I'm going to ask God 
to give you joy so that it confuses the devil. He, he won't know what in the world is going on. He'll be saying, why is that person so happy? I put them in a struggle. Why are you rejoicing? He'll be confused. And that's where we like to keep him, confused. There's a song that says, God didn't bring us this far to leave us. He didn't teach us to swim to let us drown. He didn't build his home in us. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your Over fear and all anxiety To every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus.
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus In the name of Jesus, stretch out your hand to every single person in this building that is in a struggle. Everyone who is watching online who may be in a struggle, just like the centurion said, Jesus, you don't need to come to my house. All you have to do is speak the word. So tonight, we speak the word of Jesus. We send the word of God throughout the airwaves. We send the word of God to every individual in this very room who is going through a struggle. God is going to bring us out, bring us through, and we're going to have a song in our heart through the night. And everyone is going to shout the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus, shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise, let's praise him. Come on, praise him with your mouth, Lord. Thank him. Thank him, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us, Lord. We stand here together tonight in a solidarity, together, arm in arm, spirit to spirit, and proclaim that you love us, that you are concerned about us, and even though we go through the struggle, even though we go through the shadow of the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for you are with us. Lord, your word says you prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Lord, that's not to discourage us. That's to show our enemies who's in charge. So, Lord, I just pray that we would recognize and Continue to walk by faith, even through the struggles, Lord, and allow you. You say in your word that we are the clay and you are the potter. And sometimes when we're on that potter's wheel, Lord, it's uncomfortable. You have to pull out things out of that clay that is not to be there, that is going to ruin that pottery. So sometimes you have to dig it out. You have to bring us through that process. And Lord, as every potter knows, we have to go through the fire. We have to go through the fire like pottery does because when we do that, we come out strong. We come out pure. And we come out with, a, with the blessing of knowing that you have done great things. Lord, please... Help us to remember not to push against the struggle. As you said to Paul, why do you push against the prods? Let me do the work in you. Don't resist it, but embrace it. Lord, when we face trouble, when we face heartache, when, when people don't treat us the way they're supposed to treat us, Lord, let us just sit back and say, God, you are our God. You will destroy enemies, and you will use this for your glory. You bring glory to your name through your children. And although we don't understand why it requires struggle, your word says it does. So we are, we are in faith believing. Teach us to close our eyes to the natural. To close our eyes so that we don't see what is natural, but that we would see the 
supernatural through our spirit eyes that we're walking in and walking in faith, Lord. I pray, God, that we would just take the words of this message tonight and, Lord, apply what needs to be applied. Lord, I know for me it's just continuing to know your word, to know your truth, so that the enemy comes with his lies and they are subtle and they are crafty and they are designed to deceive even the very elect that we would so recognize the truth that we would instantly be able to identify a lie and resist the devil. And your word says when we resist the devil, that's all we got to do. We don't have to fight the devil. We don't have to get in a war with the devil. We don't have to get in a mud pit. We don't have to get in the ring with the devil. All we have to do is say, I ain't going to go there. I'm resisting you. And he flees. He flees from us. He doesn't just leave. He runs away. He runs away. Lord, help us to stand on that word every day. When doubts come in, when fear comes in, we know that's not from you. We know that's not from you. That's from the enemy. And Lord, let us rebuke that and let us resist that in our lives. I pray your blessing upon everybody at this altar and in this room today. Every one of us need to know that you love us, that you love us with an everlasting love. And even though we go through those trials, we are not any less loved. And we would be able to say, no matter what we go through, yet I will praise him. For we know our Redeemer lives. Lord, we're looking forward to life with you, and we're looking forward to eternal life in your presence, Lord. Keep us focused on the prize. 